Welcome to Mind Shift Power Podcast, a show for teenagers and the adults who work with them, where we have raw and honest conversations. I'm your host, Fatima Bay, the Mind Shifter. And welcome, everyone. Today we have with us Jennifer Ledwith. She is out of Houston, Texas, and she is the owner of Scholar Ready. And in today's episode, we're, we're going to talk about the realities of paying for college. And we're going to talk about real situations that everybody falls, finds themselves in, not just the ideal ones. Because often when we're having these conversations, we're talking about ideas that half of the people can't even fit into. Um, and we want you all to be able to really relate. I want to give you real, 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 real advice today. So if you're getting ready for college um, and, or if you're a parent or guardian, no matter what your situation, this is for you. How are you today? I am uh, well, Jessica. Fatima. Thank you so much for welcoming me to your podcast. Well, I'm looking forward to this conversation. And I want to start off with allowing you to tell the audience what we had a conversation uh, that you said something to me that I thought was so well said that it needs to be said on the air. So tell me what you were talking about uh, when you said you when you were talking about looking at long term benefits of a degree. Okay, when we think about a degree, often people first of all people go to college for different reasons. One of the primary reasons people choose to attend college is for vocational training, or in other words to develop the skills, to acquire the certifications and know-how to get a, quote, good job, a good paying job after college. And people mm -hmm. often focus on the majors that pay really well when people graduate from college. For example, petroleum engineering, computer science, things of study think things of that magnitude and that's a i mean yes that's great that's that in the short term those students are going to make really good money those graduates are going to make really good money right out of college but people need to think of a college degree as a tool to give people options throughout a long career for example some mm -hmm. students may think of they're like i don't you know they may be discouraged from majoring and say communications or sociology or journalism, because people may say, well, what are you going to do with that? You're only going to make, you're, you're, you're going to make a small amount of money with that degree. I mean, you, why did you even go to college? Because you could have gone and, you know, got taken on a job that didn't require all that education, didn't require all those student loans, maybe didn't require that expense. And you could be making the same amount of money, but People need to think about the long-term gains of it. I mean, Oprah Winfrey has an undergraduate degree in journalism, and she's Oprah. When you look at the people who are orchestrating these political campaigns, and they are orchestrating the messaging and helping to influence who will elect for the next president or senator or congressperson or what have you, those people have degrees in these so-called majors that don't make a significant amount of money when graduating college. And I would be willing to bet <laughs> that at this point in their careers, they're making a significant income. And they also have um, this, they, because they have those degrees and because they've been making these connections all along, they have significant choices in their lives. And when we think about mm. getting a degree, we want to think about the long game. Think about sometimes students feel like they have to pursue something in STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, because it's that's mm. the path to a high paying job. But that's not the only path to a high paying job. And of course, there are reasons why right. people, it's great if you're passionate about those things, but you can you can study something that you really, really like. And if it fits into an overall plan and if the student is able to use that degree and work it and parlay it into a worthwhile career, the degree is worthwhile. It it has value. Some people say, oh, well, why did you get a degree in that particular major? And you should have just gone and done that one because it pays more. The jobs tied to it pay more. But 
don't listen to that. Come up with a long-term plan, work your plan, and you're going to see it's going to pay off. Yes, I, I think that I think that's so such a big deal. A lot of times people are thinking about, oh, they're thinking about one position and then and they're narrowly focused on that. So they go to school based on that and not really look at, OK, what else can you do with that degree? Because maybe you decide that you want to do you want to deliver babies and then you, you get go through all this medical training and you get there and you finally start delivering babies. and You're like, I can't freaking stand this. I'd rather work with brain surgery or something else in the medical field. Okay, there's nothing wrong with that. You can do that. But uh but yeah, I think I thought that was a really really important point to think about the long-term benefits of your degree and what can you do with it because you could do more than one thing with it. Um now, I said in the beginning that this is for everyone. If you're going to college or if you're a parent or guardian of someone going to college, no matter what your situation is, this episode is for you. So, right now I want you to state what are the three primary different uh, kinds of teens, uh, that we're talking to, um, that this episode is really for that. Everybody fits into one. Okay. So everyone fits in one of these three categories. You have the students whose parents are, who can, you have parents who are, um, who have the money to send their kids to college. They have the resources Mm -hmm. to, to pay for their kids to go to college. And they're also very engaged in the process. And then you have those students whose parents don't have the money, don't have the resources, but the parents are very engaged and very supportive. And then that third group are students whose parents are not supportive. The parents are, when I say parents, I really mean the adults at home, whomever the adults are at home. Yeah, right. They're not supporting that student in his or her journey to college. So three groups, you have supportive parents with the resources to send their students to college. You have supportive parents who do not have the resources <laughs> to send their kids to college. And then mm-hmm. you have that third group of students whose uh, adults at home do not are not supporting them in their pursuit of a higher education. With or with, without money. Yeah, with or without <laughs> money. It, yeah, with, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that that lack of support um, is I just got to comment on that because I've I've seen that uh, that lack the because people think that people assume when they're giving out information about how to pay for college and and just all the other advice that goes around it. People assume that everybody has supportive parents. And I'm here to tell you, I have I have actually seen where parents try to sabotage their own kids. Can you talk about that a little bit more? Because you've seen it I've more seen than I have. parents sabotage their students. Uh, I've seen parents sabotage their kids, and when, and sometimes there are adults who are looking f- from the outside in, trying to understand number one, why is that parent doing that, and number two, how can I help that student because the student has so much promise but the student is not receiving the support that he or she is receiving. So first of all, when you think about, you ask yourself, why is the parent not being supportive? Well, you know, as human beings, we do things that benefit us. Think about why that might benefit that parent. Maybe that parent has other children, has younger children, and Mm -hmm. that student who is college bound is providing childcare, is is a chauffeur is is cooking yep is may, maybe the student mm-hmm. has a job which we know a part-time job in the short term will pay more <laughs> than or beg your pardon working full-time in a job outside of high school right out of high school is going to pay more right. than what a college mm-hmm. student can earn in the short term um so that parent is benefiting mm-hmm. from that student being there also the parent may be jealous of there are some parents who are jealous of their students bingo and they're jealous of them and they don't want their kids to do better than them there there Mm -hmm. are parents like that so we if you so if you're an adult on the outside looking in wanting to help this student who wants to go to college you have to figure out how you can it's a tricky balance because you have to show respect to that parent and at the same right. time, you still want to guide that student to um, to going to college. So 
if it were me guiding that student who doesn't have that support from that parent, I would say I would try to make it to where because and often parents like that have control issues and they, you know, in some instances, they really, really yep. want to control mm-hmm. their kids for they like yep. power and control. That's why they had children. So they could have power and control over somebody because they can't control or they don't have power in their own lives. So but one thing is, I mean, one thing that's good, most likely, is that the parent is allowing the student to go to school. So what you want to do is you want to make sure as the adult on the outside looking in, maybe you're a neighbor, maybe you're a family, maybe you're a relative, maybe you are a, a an educator at the school. Got Make sure that student can get what he or she needs at the school. Make make sure. And and if you and and maybe and you as the care as the caring adult, maybe you can show up to the events at the school to support that student in pursuing an education. But I would try to make everything as an adult on the outside looking in, I would try to make sure that that student gets everything he or she needs from the school. Maybe there is a um, a counselor or another teacher at the school who uh, who favors the student. And you can talk to that teacher. You can talk with that educator and say, hey, you know, um, you know, while you're after school hosting tutorials, you know, can so and so can this young person come sit in your room and and work on some applications? That's the main thing. The main thing Mm -hmm. is making sure figuring out a way to make sure that they get the resources at the one place that the parent is going to be okay for him or for him to go for, for him, for he or she to go because after school, the parent is not going to want the student to do that. The, the, the child is probably working or providing daycare or helping to run that household. And you have to think of ways to, help them to get it done in school. Because if you can get that student to, you know, if you can get the student to have all of the, get get all of the paperwork in and, and get to high school graduation. I mean, after that, it's a wrap. The, The college acceptance is in and, and the student can go, you know, theoretically the student, the student can go. I don't know how to address that. If the parent says, Oh no, you can't leave here. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to, now I don't know how to address that part. Well, I, I, since you're talking about that, I did want to bring up a subgroup within the unsupportive parent group. Um, And I I just think it's so important to talk about this because there's so many kids sitting out there with unsupportive, Mm -hmm. unsupportive parents and they think Mm -hmm. they're the only ones and they're discouraged. It's very easy Mm -hmm. for them to get discouraged. And some of them do end up hurting Mm -hmm. their lives and not pursuing further mm-hmm. education because they think they mm-hmm. don't have to. Some there are parents out there who are just straight up gen, mm-hmm. just mm-hmm. ignorant, ignorant. And when I ignorant, when I say the word ignorant, I don't mean that as mm-hmm. just an insult. I mean that ignorant Correct. means lack of knowledge. So if you have a parent who never finished high school, they work hard mm-hmm. and they provide, but they don't believe in further education because they never mm-hmm. received it themselves though to me those are the hardest mm-hmm. ones to deal with um sometimes and because they have this mentality of you don't need education you just need to work and mm-hmm. pay bills and that's your exist that's mm-hmm. your existence which we both know is that's not what we're mm-hmm. here on earth for but um but for people like that it's hard now what you were just saying about you don't know what to say to someone whose parent is like i can't go I have actually uh, seen that Mm. and helped uh, talk Mm. someone through that (laughs) Um, where it's similar to what you're describing. I I think if they are under 18, it's hard because you're technically still a minor. It also depends on the state that you're in because we're, you know, this podcast is for Mm -hmm. the U S and Canada. Um, I don't know the rules in Canada, but I know in the U S uh, in most states, if you're 18, you are technically mm-hmm. an adult. Legally, mm-hmm. you can do what you want. Now, just because you can do it legally doesn't mean it's still easy because you still Correct. have ties at home. So this is where 
I, and I'm talking to the audience right now, this is where I think Jennifer's advice is so dead on is so extremely important that we who are on the outside looking in, who are want to be the uh, supportive adults, this is where we can step in and be creative with how we do it. As she said, there's a fine line because you want to respect the parent. You don't want to just go all, all in there all bullish and be like, I'm taking your child because you ain't doing right by her. La, 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 la. There's some people who do stuff like that. And that is a mm-hmm. foolish way to handle things. Uh, you might be well-intended, but that's not a, a good way to handle things. Um, use some wisdom and be creative and figure out how can I help them to get out of their juvenile prison and get into you know, the, a better future for themselves. Once they get out, how can we keep them out? You know, you really have to think about that. And I'm not saying that I have all the answers either, but I'm saying that we have to get, think outside the box in those situations. There are answers, but those answers aren't going to be the same for everyone. Correct. And I have actually helped someone with that. And I did it without Mm. talking to the parent. I walked the child through how to handle it, what they can Mm -hmm. do. I coached them through it basically. And what can you do in a situation like that? There are there are answers, but those answers, like I said, are not going to be the same for everyone. And I just, I really wanted to speak to that because I know that the child that I helped, it, it wasn't just them. There are so many other kids out there who have unsupportive parents uh, out of either general ignorance or jealousy. I really think that jealousy is is at least 50% mm-hmm. of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's a big, mm-hmm. big one. And the parent might not recognize that that's where it's coming from. It's a whole psychological mm-hmm. game. Um, but it's, at the end of the day, it's really selfish to try mm-hmm. to sabotage your mm-hmm. child mm-hmm. in their future. Um, but if you if you have a parent like that's like that, and you are listening to me, you can get out of it. You just got to find the right adult to help mm-hmm. you walk through it. Now, you just gave some advice of of what to do when you have unsupported parents. What advice do you have for the 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 uh, the teenager who has supportive parents? But they ain't got no money. <laughs> okay, that's okay. They have supportive parents, but they don't have any money. So that's a good, um, and, right. and that's and that's that that's a, a large number, <laughs> significant amount of people. Yeah. What they need to do is they need to look at what they have to look at what resources they have available. For example, they they need to have a con. Everybody needs to have a conversation about. So they have supportive parents. That's great. So everybody who's sending the kid to college needs to, they, they need to sit down and have a conversation. It could be, I know when I went to college, um, I was aside from my scholarships, I was supported by family members and not just the people in my household, but people beyond my household. And it would be beneficial for everybody to sit down and have a conversation about who is paying for what with what and when. Mm-hmm. And when I say that, it could be, well, who is taking out a loan for how mu- how for how much money and when are they going to do it? And what is that repayment plan going to be? Um, they need to they need to start with going to a college's net price. And so once they have an idea of what they're willing to spend, that's the first thing people need to start with what they're willing to contribute. Like what, what is the budget? Like don't, right. don't look at what these colleges are telling you that, that the price is like, you know, what, what, it, what is the budget? What, what do you have? So for example, with, you know, if you go and buy a house, um, you know, you're not going to go to the, when you go buy a house, you should have a dollar amount in mind of what you can afford. Um, and and then so what you but don't let the high price high sticker tag high price tag of a school discourage you from applying because there are wonderful fantastic universities that are some of the most expensive colleges to attend yet if a student has the right kind of um uh uh app, they if they say the right things on their application then that school will probably grant them enough money to where it's cheaper for them to go to that elite college than it would be for them to go to a state school. You know what? I have I have discovered that that is true. I, I was surprised because I just assumed state school is mm-hmm. going to be cheaper because in, in, in some situations and mm-hmm. often it, it is. Uh, but that's when you're looking at the initial price tag. But when you look at the assistance you can get at each school, my God, it is, is it different. It is. And 
it is oh my god is it different and um i can think about a young lady right now she got a better deal uh going to the private school she's going to than if she had gone to a state school which mm-hmm. surprised me but it is but it i can tell you it's true now i'm in new york state so i know it's not the same in, in every state but yeah look for the programs that are out and there. The, and, <laughs> and i want to add to that i want to add to that I want to piggyback off what uh, Jennifer just said. Do not, and I'm going to reword it. Don't assume that the answer is no and that there's no way to pay for it. Try, 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 try. Because not trying guarantees you definitely don't (laughs) get in. And it might be, (laughs) you know, it's like, oh, I'm a Mm -hmm. guaranteed failure Mm -hmm. if I don't try. Mm -hmm. Well, of course, of course you are. Um, You got to try, you got to try, you got to try. Apply, apply, apply. And don't sit there. And just wait for stuff to fall in your lap. If someone tells you no, fine, go find it somewhere else. You you got to be like that in life, and it, you might as well start with college. Abs- <laughs> absolutely, college. they they need to look and and that Fatima, you bring up a good point. They need to try and try and try, which means they need to have a broad selection of colleges that they are pursuing. When they think about when yes. they they need to run the net price calculator, and you can go to a school's website and find the net price calculator. And that's going to help. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I just said, yeah, yeah, and that'll help them to understand what an estimate of what the cost will be. And so once you go after you get that price tag for the net price calculator, then start looking at the school's uh, scholarships list. Look at the school's financial aid office information Mm -hmm. and start looking at the scholarships for most students. Most students largest source of scholarships will be their college or university. Not, I mean, I know that people are applying for the little small ones, the ones that are a thousand here, 500 there. Mm -hmm. And and that's great because there is more, I mean, okay. Yeah. That's more than you had before you started, but the main focus should be on the scholarships from the institutions Mm -hmm. because a, because Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you something that $1,000 scholarship, is that 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 community organization offers and I'm a part of a community organization that offers thousand dollar scholarships and we do great work and I'm very pleased with what you do at the same time you know that scholarship is not going to keep up with tuition inflation that it's not yeah right, because the right. colleges you know and community organization can give you a thousand dollars but a college can say oh we're going to give you we're going to pay for your your tuition your fees your books your room your board uh, they they have the power to do that. <laughs> Who else has the power to do that? They so yeah. And also, there's programs. There some colleges have programs um, that you have to get into that help you specifically. I know in mm-hmm. New York State. Um, I know you're in Texas, but I I, I and I can mm-hmm. only speak to New York State. They have EOP, Equal mm-hmm. Opportunity Program. I think, yeah, Equal Opportunity Program is what it's called. An H-E-O-P, Higher Education mm-hmm. Opportunity Program, I believe is what it stands for. But somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, if I have the acronyms wrong, uh, the the what the acronyms stand for wrong. But those programs are amazing in New York State. They were created to help people of color primarily um, to get into school systems that would otherwise they wouldn't get into. And they have a a, a, a very good track record of creating some of the most productive members mm. of society. So I believe very strongly in the program and I've seen, I know people work in them and I've seen people, you know, go through them and be very successful in their careers. But it's, that's, that's a New York state thing. There are other states out there that have similar type of programs. They may go by different names. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're calling every state, but people look for them. Don't ever accept anything as, well, nope, this is all we can do for you. That's bullshit. Try harder. (laughs) Look for more. There's programs out there that there's so many programs out there that are not always well advertised um, in every state. Uh, There's something out there in every state that will help people pay for college that aren't always well advertised. And I want to add to the piece about scholarships. So many and I've preached about this before. So many people think that scholarships aren't for them or I only got C's in in school. So I'm not going to qualify for scholarships. That's crap too. Try. And if you try for a hundred, you get rejected for 90, yeah. you might get 10, but you're guaranteed to get nothing That's if right. you try for nothing. So <laughs> just, just try. And I, I just feel so strongly about this because I've, I've just seen people make tr- 
just such dramatic, important, intensely important decisions based on what they think they can get instead of actually trying. And it hurts them. And I hate to see that because I want to see everybody successful. Um, do you have any other advice for people with so people money? without money? So first, so run the net price calculator. Look at the scholarships from the colleges and universities. Also, take the PSAT, SAT, and ACT seriously. the The schools are many of these colleges are test optional. I think I think a, a good number of schools and and yeah, a are, lot are, of them are, are and changing, and over yeah. and and over time they're changing them. Um, to require the test for admissions, but all along for many of these schools, <laughs> they have been requiring the SAT and ACT for um, when it comes to offering um, scholarships, like mer- you know, significant oh, money. Okay. And usually, people who and there are many people who fall into that category of not having money for. Like they may not have money for college, but the federal government may say, whoa, 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 you do have enough money for college. And we think that you can contribute, you know, 10, you know, $10,000 a year to your student's college education. And that parent is looking at the at the at the federal government and thinking, where am I going to get this money from every year? So and those people, those people who make too much money to qualify for financial aid, need based financial aid but mm. not enough money to pay, for, actually, pay, actually pay, they really need to look at merit-based scholarships. And so many of the merit-based scholarships ah, okay. are tied to the exams. And the thing about, okay. but what people don't realize about the exams is that you need to start early preparing for them. And when I say early, you need to start okay. as early as 10th grade paying attention to the PSAT scores. Because the PSAT scores are going to, yes, they do lead to um, scholarships tied to the National Merit Awards, but that's only for the top 1% of our students. For the other 99%, <laughs> um, that other 99% of students need to look at those test scores to see where they are in terms of being on track to do well on the SAT and ACT. Because those scores and okay. and one of the biggest things that so there's there are a few things that I could talk about here, um, but I'm going to say uh, don't wait until the last minute to prepare. I have parents call me all the time right before their student senior year, and they tell me this all the time. They say my student scored this on the exam and it just doesn't reflect their potential because my student is getting A's and B's in all, you know, all her classes and all her teachers love her and, and all of that. But the thing is like, there is a big gap between what the students know and what their grades are. Students in high school often are not getting grades based on the mastery of the material. They, their teacher could be given a grade to them because maybe the school district will not allow the teacher to fail the students. Maybe the school mm-hmm. district doesn't allow the teacher to give homework that the students complete at home. Maybe the, so maybe the mm-hmm. school district isn't honest about the reading proficiency of its students. Maybe, maybe oh that God, student yeah. is in advanced classes and, and rightfully so. But then maybe Johnny's mother wanted Johnny to be in the advanced classes to boost his grade point average. But Johnny has no business being in there because he doesn't have the, the, he doesn't have the fundamentals of that subject matter to do well in that class. So what happens is you have this teacher who has 20 or 30 students in one classroom. And that teacher is teaching students across multiple reading levels. So if you're a teacher and you have 20 or 30 students, and you have students at multiple reading levels, how are you going to help lift the students who should be in there? It's not realistic. Mm-hmm. So that, so that, and that has a, and that has an effect on how well the students do on the SAT and ACT because those tests are knowledge exams. Those are, they're about background knowledge. They're about reading. Often people will say, oh, well, my child has test anxiety. Well, okay. Well, that, yes. That's a true thing. But guess what? When I, and I'm from Texas, I'm from a community with a school 
um, that's a perennial contender for the state football title. OK, uh, you can't tell me those young men aren't nervous when they get out on that field to play. You can't tell me they don't get a little anxious. These are the same, you know, but guess what? They go out there and they perform and they get the job done. So it's I, I know that chest anxiety is real. And I do believe that there's a segment of the population who just cannot perform just like, yeah, people who have stage fright and they just have so much stage fright. They can't go out and perform. But you have the rest of us can can manage our anxiety and do well. And we manage it through preparation. Sometimes people say, oh, well, you know, she's just not he's not good at taking tests. She's not good at taking tests. No, they are not good at preparing for the tests. And and that's what's happening. Like you show me a kid who you say is not good at taking tests and you show me the preparation. You show me the process. And I will guarantee you that Mm -hmm. that student is not fulfilling his or her capacity. So parents need to start very early with looking at the test because I'm going to tell you what these tests can do. I have a student who um, came to me to prepare for ACT and the highest that a student can score on the ACT is a 36. That student we prepared uh, for, I prepared him for his exam and his ACT score went from a 24 to a 27. Consequently, his college gave him 20,000 additional dollars. For scholarship. Wow. So I want people to think about what that means. That means that this young man is going to is has twenty thousand dollars that he doesn't have to repay because twenty thousand dollars, a twenty thousand scholarship is worth way more than twenty thousand dollars, because when you start talking about repaying it and paying interest on that money, you're looking at I mean, depending on how long he pays it off. I mean, that. That that could be that twenty thousand dollars scholarship could be worth forty thousand dollars because he doesn't have to repay that whole thing with respect to the when you add the interest on it. His parents are educators and they want to retire at some point. Think about that. That's twenty thousand dollars that they don't have to pull from their retirements, that they can contribute to their retirements, that they can contribute to their own future because that baby score moved from that baby score moved three points. That's the and that's transformative. And, you know, people can sit and they can say, oh, we're just going to pray for a good score and all that. That this is not the lottery. This is not again. And I come from a, a, a background. I come from a I went to a football high school. I went to a football college. And, you know, the preparation I admire um, in my career. Some of my favorite students have been football players because they understand what it takes to meet a goal. They don't sit around and just pray that the Hail Mary is going to work, which I actually did go to one of the state Mm -hmm. football games and we did win the game by a Hail Mary pass. That's something that they practice. Oh, that's a scenario that they ran and practice over and over and over and over again. And if they can do that on a football field with all of the danger and all of the risk and all of the heat and all of the unpleasantness, You can do that sitting in a classroom study. So I wanted to ask you about the third Mm -hmm. group of people, which are supportive parents Mm -hmm. and they have money. I think that you are, you, some of what you just Mm -hmm. spoke about definitely applies to them. Um, Cause I still think that even if they have the money, they should still seek out scholarships if they can and reduce Mm -hmm. their input. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, so that they can take that money and put it towards something else for the future and not just everything for the education. Do you have any other advice for people? I, I, okay. So you're situation? talking about the the advice for the people who can pay the, the, the parents who can pay and the parents who, and, and they're also supportive. Yes. Um, so right. I wanted, so when I, I'm also a certified financial planner and when I was studying to become a certified financial planner, I remember asking my professor, to teach us more about social security. And she said, Oh, don't worry about that, Jennifer, because your clients will be affluent and they aren't going to worry. They're not going to be concerned about social security. They're not going to be concerned about that. Okay. Let me tell you something. Every time I have met with someone (laughs) who was getting ready to retire, who made 
a significant who had very high who made a significant amount of money and who had a significant amount of assets already set aside in retirement. Every last one of them wanted to know about Social Security. They want they wanted to know they oh, oh they all wanted to know. They all wanted to know even. I mean, so that I mean, so so that's the thing with people with scholarships, uh, people, parents who have the wherewithal to pay for college, they're looking for a way to save money as well. How do you think they got all that? Yeah. No, nothing wrong with that. How do you think they were (laughs) able to save all that money? How do you think, how do you think they were able to get all that money? And so with those parents, those parents need to, um, need to have really, so what they should do is they should envision the kind of adult that they want to have raised by the time that, you know, that young person is like 25 or 30. What, how do you want this student to be? Do you want this student to be an independent, productive member of society and and happy and thriving? So then you have to think about, well, what are the things that I can do to make sure that my student, that my child can can understand that through this process because the college admissions process, college going process, college financing process, um, these processes are great in building character in young people. So when you, when you think, right. when you think about right. what you want that person to have, you think about, okay, well, and then you also need to think about what you want for yourself and think about, okay, yes, you can pay the full cost for your student to go to college. Congratulations. Do you want your student to have skin in the game? So maybe you're going to require, maybe you're going to decide, you know what? Yes, I have the ability to pay for all of this, but I would like for my student to be able to contribute something to the process as well. Maybe it's helping, you know, maybe that student has to get a scholarship and keep up the scholarship, or maybe that student has to have a part-time job or something to ensure that that student has skin in the game. But with the, with folks who can afford to pay for it, congratulations. And instead, before you write a check for everything, think about some creative ways to use this process to create that adult. You want, Hey, 20, the adult is 23 years old and is no longer on your health insurance. Isn't that going to feel great? Or, that is you know, excellent or advice. thank you. Or, or this, Hey, Hey, this 27 year old is getting ready to buy a house and, uh, you know, and, and is, and is, is ready to buy a house is, is responsible is, is, is starting a family is, is, is married is, is, is doing is, is just, um, joyous and engaged with life. So what can you do besides writing a blank check for college? to help that student get to that part. Excellent advice. And ex- I love the, I love, I love everything you just said and getting them to think differently. And, uh, and so with that, I want to tell the audience, what is Scholar Ready? Um, and what are the services? All right. So Scholar Ready is a business. We have been open for 20 years and we prepare families financially and academically for college. We help parents to, um, to to really be able to prepare financially for college. So those are the different things, tools you can use to pay for college and not just 529 plans, but reasonable ways to work with your budget to make sure that your student is able to get that education that he or she desires. On the academic side, we create the conditions to allow our students to have choices. So what, 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 what helps students have choices? Being able to read well, being able to um, do math well, scoring well on PSAT, SAT, and ACT. Another thing is writing, knowing how to write an excellent essay. We create the conditions because I'm going to tell you, there are students who I have students who choose the full rides that are offered to them. (laughs) And I have students who forego the full rides and go do something else. They go 
take out tens of thousands of dollars in debt to go do the same thing. And, and they had the same choices. So at Scholar Ready, we create the conditions to help families. So the parents and the students to have the options, and then they have to choose accordingly. We also, okay. ha- oh, thank you. That. We have the, we have, if you go, I think you'll put it in the show notes. There's, there's a link to the, the, the classes that I offer through Eventbrite. And we're offering classes to help students to understand how to start essays. We have seminars, um, how to go to college for free seminars for student athletes, for students of, of first generation. So when I say first generation, I mean, maybe they, the parents may have attended schools and graduated from colleges in their original countries and they immigrated to America. And now they're having to help their kiddo make the leap from K through 12 to college. We have seminars for those families. We have how to go to college for free seminars for people who want to attend historically black colleges and universities. And we have seminars for people who are interested in planning financially for college in the last few years before college. Okay. Sounds like you are doing a lot. Um, I I really love there's oh my god I want this conversation to go on longer because there's so many bits and pieces that you talked about that I feel extremely passionate about um I I love to see people succeed and I really want to see more of our youth make the right decisions for themselves um not the right decisions for everybody else but for themselves and go for the things that they think they can't get um because some of your best inventors in the world are the people that do that. Um, well, thank you again, uh, Jennifer Ledwith, for coming on today. And uh, for all your listeners, the, the links will be in the podcast episode description. Um, and once again, thank, thank you, Thank you, Fatima. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And now for a mind-shifting moment. I want to take a moment to encourage you if you have unsupportive parents or a parent who either actively tries to sabotage your going to college, won't help you with financial aid, even though they can, or whatever method they use to try to discourage you. The biggest way that many of them do is they try to discourage you mentally, try to make you believe that you can't or shouldn't pursue your education. You shouldn't leave home. You should stay home and help out, blah, 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 whatever the details are. Please seek out an adult support, whether that's someone at school, whether it's someone in your family, whether it's someone at church, your mosque, your neighborhood, your whatever. Seek out an adult who will give you that support because I promise you, you need it. You mentally need that support, if nothing else. You need someone who's going to encourage you to go on, to keep on keeping on and keep pursuing and keep trying. Because if you sit there under the discouragement you're receiving at home and that's all you've got, you're likely to end up failing in what you were called to do. You're likely to end up not going, pursuing your education like you should. I just want to encourage you to find an adult who's going to be by your side and be that support because you need us. And there's so many of us that if we know, we're totally willing to help you and support you, help you to come up with ideas, connect you with whatever you need to be connected with. Don't just sit in your home, your prison of discouragement. Thank you for listening to MindShift Power Podcast. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel at The MindShifter. If you have any comments, topic suggestions, or would like to be a guest on the show, please visit FatimaBay.com slash podcast. Remember, there's power in shifting your thinking. Tune in for next week.